ocean people. Welcome back to Brent Durand Underwater. Do you ever wonder what all those numbers on the back of your strobe actually mean? There's positives, there's negatives, there's decimals, there's numbers one to 100, right side down, upside down, every which way. Well, today we're gonna break that down so that we can understand what exactly those numbers mean. We'll talk about TTL or automatic strobe power. We'll talk about flash exposure compensation. We'll talk about manual strobe power and guide numbers and what those mean. And then we'll talk about a few pro tips like distance to subject and how that affects your strobe power or your strobe intensity. So hang tight, let's dive in. The numbers on the back of our strobes can be broken down usually into two different categories, which is TTL or automatic shooting or manual strobe power. Now, that's not every single strobe. Some will have one or the other or different variations of that. Some will mix numbers and graphics, but for the most part, this will get you on the way to really understanding what these numbers mean and how to best use them to create strobe exposure and flash exposure in your underwater images. So let's start with basic TTL shooting, which stands for through the lens, but don't worry about that, that's confusing. But in short, what that means is your camera is going to work with your flash to pick the correct exposure for the scene, and you don't have to do anything. It's automatic. So a lot of entry-level strobes will shoot only in TTL because it's made for beginners, it's automatic, it's easy to use, whereas more mid-level and advanced strobes will offer TTL plus manual shooting capabilities. So you've got that flexibility to customize and really get creative with your shots in manual power and grow with that strobe as your photography continues to progress. When you're looking at TTL shooting, basically what happens is the camera sends out a pre-flash which lights the scene, bounces back to the camera, the camera meters the scene, and it determines the exposure and says, I need more strobe power or less strobe power to light the scene correctly. It calculates that, then the second flash comes out, lights the scene, records the picture, and you've got a correct exposure in your camera. Some of the numbers you might see on the back of the strobe now correspond to adjusting that TTL exposure, which is called flash exposure compensation. Now zero is in the middle of that range because that's a perfect exposure as deemed by the camera. But if you think that exposure is a little high, you're going to want to turn down that strobe exposure. Or if you think that exposure is a little low, you want to turn up that strobe exposure to get the exposure you think is correct. So for instance, if the images you're shooting are a little dark, you may want to go to plus 0.3 or plus one third plus 0.6 or plus two thirds, which is going to increase that flash power to create a brighter scene in your photos. So what you're doing is telling your camera, look, the scene is a little too dark for me, that's what you think is good, but I'm going to tell you, shoot what you think is good, and then add two thirds of a stop of power onto the scene, or one third a stop of power, or one whole stop of power if you go all the way to that one. The same thing in reverse. If you go into those negatives, you're reducing the strobe power coming out from the camera and from the flash because you thought that original metering was too bright. So basically those numbers on the back of the strobe with the positives or negatives help you with that flash exposure compensation to manually adjust the flash power after the automatic shooting. So I hope that makes sense. Once you get to that point in that type of shooting, you're almost shooting manual anyways. So I always recommend trying to push yourself into manual strobe power and manual strobe control because you get most creative flexibility that way. So let's jump right into manual strobe power. The other set of numbers or the primary set of numbers you'll see on a lot of strobes are for that manual strobe power. Now there's two ways those can be broken out. Yes, again, another subset, but it's pretty simple. If you're using a strobe like the Sea Life Ultimate Flash, you'll have an A for automatic mode, and then numbers one through 10, one being the lowest strobe power and 10 being the highest strobe power. If you're using a strobe like Retra's Prime X or Pro X Flash, then you'll see numbers one to 100 on that strobe, which indicates one being the lowest power and 100 being the highest power. What you might also see with a lot of strobes is the guide numbers on there. And these are those numbers that go 16 to 32 or 33 or 34. So your lowest number might be two and then it will go up to that 32, 33, 34 number depending on the guide number. 
And basically a guide number is just the strobe power level. It's a universal way to measure that strobe power and that strobe output. So when we look at the guide numbers, we'll see that the strobe output of 32, for instance, is maximum power and two would be minimum power. So you can adjust your knob based on that knowledge. Now there will oftentimes also be graphics on there that show you full power or show you three quarters power or one half power, which are really useful. The Inon Z330 is another popular flagship model strobe, and they've got a little key with the numbers on the back of the strobe that shows you full power and minimum power. So what are these shooting tips? Well, these are a couple answers to questions I've had on videos lately. So as always, if you have questions about any of this stuff, leave them in the comments and I will try and answer them in the comments and or in the next video that we're producing. But distance to subject came up and distance to subject will control the amount of flashlight hitting your subject. In short, the fall off from your strobes decreases exponentially as you get farther from your subject. Remember, the light has to go to the subject, bounce off of it, and come back through the lens to the camera sensor. So the farther you go, the less intense your strobe will be. So as you get closer and closer to your subject, you get brighter, more vivid light from that strobe at the same strobe power. And that's why if you're shooting wide angle, you're going to be farther away, more powerful strobes will deliver better results. They're brighter, they can shoot through more water and deliver brighter images um, back into the camera. Camera settings are the other variable that will control flash exposure. Now ISO plays a part there, which will be different depending on macro or wide angle shooting. And your aperture will play a big role in the brightness and intensity of your strobe power, depending again on shooting macro or wide angle. If you haven't seen it yet, check out my mastering exposure video because that will break down the camera settings more and also how to use your histogram in determining correct exposure. So I hope this breakdown and these tips are useful per usual. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. Leave me your questions, your feedback. Visit my website, tutorials.brentdurand.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.